Hey, it's Sam. So I'm doing a update here on the full moon in Leo that's happening on February 24th in Magha Nakshatra. That's the first section of Leo. The full moon is where we reflect the sun sign back. So the sun and a few other planets are over there in Aquarius. And this full moon is in Leo reflecting back the Aquarius sun. So I'm going to be talking about that today. Please like the video. Clicking like helps a lot more than you know. It pushes the video higher in relevant video searches. Also, please leave a nice comment. Comments also help more than you know as it raises the video in searches. Many times with hundreds of likes, there are only a dozen comments and they can be disproportionately negative. So be positive. Let me know if you like this. Even just a few words really help. So subscribe, ring the bell to get notified of upcoming videos. So as you see here, we have this chart of the full moon um, on February 24th. And the full moon, again, as you can see, it's when the sun and moon are opposite the earth. The earth is in the middle. The sun, like when you're watching the sun rise now, it's the constellation of Aquarius, which means the stars behind the sun is Aquarius. Now, that's not a debatable point. If you're using Western astrology, though, and you're like, well, wait a minute, hello, it's Pisces. Well, hello, it's not. The Western zodiac is not based on the sky. It's based on the vernal equinox. So this full moon in Western is called Virgo because they start the zodiac 24 degrees after the constellations. So if you're going to be like, hello, this is... It's Virgo. What's this guy saying? Well, what this guy is saying is that he looks at the sky. And the actual constellation behind the moon is Magha. And by the way, this is a big one because when you look up at the sky, when you look up at the moon, if you can see it, if you can see the sky behind it, you'll see uh, there's a big star there called Regulus. So this full moon is a very good one to test the astronomy. And I will just say hello back <laughs> that this full moon is going to be big and bright up there and you'll probably see a big star next to it that kind of even looks like a planet and it's called Regulus in Western astronomy um, and in Vedic, astrom in, in Vedic astronomy it's called Magha that's the nakshatra because in Vedic astrology the nakshatra is they're not stars they're portions of space so this particular portion of space does have a big star in it called Regulus in Western astronomy um, so they're 13 degree 20 second portions of space. That's what the nakshatras are. And there are 27 of them. And they begin, they actually define the zodiac. And we call Aries the beginning of that first nakshatra called Ashwini, which happens here at zero Aries. And the nakshatra of Ashwini happens here. That's different than Western astrology, which starts Aries on the vernal equinox, which happens at about... Um, which happens at about six degrees of Pisces, literally Pisces in the sky. So just to let you know that, because again, there are people who watch this and they don't understand, but what happens is that we have the Sun, Mercury, and Saturn here right now are in Aquarius. So there's a lot of Saturn energy as well, because Saturn is the ruler of Aquarius, and that's where the Sun is in the sky, right? The Sun is there with his ruler and also with Mercury. And then the moon is going to be reflecting back that sun energy. So the sun in Aquarius is about larger humanistic qualities, things that are more transpersonal rather than personal. They're more about universal themes like, again, we could say things like perhaps politics or social causes, things where we understand our collective identity more. Right, You're a person, but you also live in a society. You have a collective duty, even like to your family, but also to your country, to your culture, to your spiritual community, to your job. These are all, these are all collective identities, right? So Aquarius is very much about the collective and doing things that benefit the collective. This is why Aquarius has a very strong humanitarian nature. Because again, where we realize it's not just about me and my joy and my benefit and my excitement and the and you know the power and the joy of being alive as me, this individual, it's about how I can share that 
and how that can be of benefit to everyone. And in fact, if it's only about me and my individual joy and happiness, well, then it's not very joyful or happy at all because I'm not the center of the universe. And by the way, that's what the Leo principle is. So again, we have in one side, we have the sun, but, and, you know, as I said, also um, Saturn and Mercury over here in Aquarius, where that's kind of the collective thing that we're all going through. The sun is moving through Aquarius and we're all looking at our collective identity. But then this full moon is where we now reflect that back. And what this means is that we have to have a harmony between that collective, you know, potentially selfless nature and that individuality, which is what Leo is about, right? So for example, when people have a lot of planets, let's say in in um, Aquarius, or if Aquarius is very prominent, like someone's rising sign and then a bunch of planets there or something, or even now, we may feel kind of subsumed or kind of, you know, lorded over by the collective. For example, if someone grows up in a large family, right, and they're just one of like five or six kids, and they sort of get lost in the mix a little bit, they're very aware of their place as a sort of cog in the wheel, you know, one of the many people in the family, but they might, but perhaps parents are too busy to make them feel special about themselves as well, right? So we're sort of doing both. Um, and so the same is true, like if someone is, they have all this Aquarius energy and they're like, okay, I'm here to like serve. And, I'm, and I've seen this a lot with Aquarius people. The instinct is to kind of serve a higher cause, or at least this is what they think. But then there's always this shadow resentment of giving up their power to these powerful figures that they're serving or these powerful causes that they're serving. They can There can be this resentment that gets built up. I've seen this several times, many times actually, where someone would want to like serve, let's say, my work or some, something in the spiritual community and they're like, I'm all about service, but they're actually kind of a hidden resentment because they're not feeling empowered. They're not feeling special or, and their service just becomes a kind of feeling of servitude where instead of choosing to serve in this way, they feel like it's kind of forced on them and they're kind of, it's not really humbled, but it's not, you know, very humbling. It's just that they're humbled because they're afraid of stepping up or being, you know, seen and whatnot. So there's this shadow side between Aquarius and Leo. And so the full moon is to reflect and bring harmony to that thing. We we all want to serve higher causes, but we we want to we want to choose the cause. The cause has to be in alignment with who we are, right? So you see, I have this down here. Leo is ruled by the sun. It's a sattvic sign seeking inner light, proper use of power, a sense of personal dignity, self-centered. One king, can, only one king can sit on the throne at a time. So this full moon in Leo has that sort of quality to it, right? Um, and then Magha Nakshatra is the first part of Leo. Magha is ruled by the Petris, the divine ancestors. And it's our celestial teachers as well as our family in this lifetime, our lineage, our birth family and our spiritual family. And Magha Nakshatra as well as Leo is very much related to royalty. We've seen a lot with the royal family in the news here lately. These next two eclipse cycles are going to be, or these next two lunation cycles are going to be big because we're having the eclipses coming in. The next time we have the full moon in March, March 25th, this is going to be a lunar eclipse and it's going to be happening because then the moon is going to move into Virgo and then there's going to be a lunar eclipse March 25th. Again, this could be, a, this is a very perilous time for King Charles and the royal family. We also saw and we also also know something that's happening in the news. Donald Trump, who used to be the president of the United States, he has a trial that actually starts on that lunar eclipse. Again, he's seen, he actually has a Leo ascendant, and he's definitely seen as a sort of king to a lot of people. But again, so kings getting humbled and getting changed and transformed is a huge theme right now. And so... Um, in addition, you know, what I'm doing right now is also I'm 
I'm uh, teaching a class on the nakshatras, this nakshatra of Magha, you can see right here as it says Magha, it literally means like beneficent and mighty. The symbol is a throne or a palanquin like I have here, this throne down here, right? That's the symbol. The nakshatras are these, again, these 27 portions of space that are 13 degrees and 20 minutes. And the Petris are the deity, these divine ancestors. So again, the ancestors aren't just like the ancient yoga masters and the people who, you know, brought down the lineage, or like if you're a Christian, the people who wrote the Bible, or it's not just these, you know, sort of progenitors of teaching, but it's also your birth family. You were born into a situation, right? And so this nakshatra of Magha also has a very strong connection to family and lineage, right? But then there's also other indicators like the race is called Rakshasha, which means an eccentric force. And the animal is a rat, the rat animal, right? And then the nature is fierce and severe. As you can see down here, I have several, um, I'm teaching a course on the nakshatras and as you see, there's a link there that says Nakshatra's course. And if you go here, you can see that there's a, this is um, where I have the class here at the Nakshatra's course, Nakshatra's Magic Weekend Intensive. And if you click here to register, you can see it's a very deeply discounted course. It'll be about $100 after the discounted time. But there's also this special right now, these time release bonuses that you can get these are called shock and awe classes, four very powerful classes that are being taught now on each different aspect of the nakshatras that I have here. Like for example, the animal is also called the yoni. And I'm teaching a class on this inner animal, this yoni on February 22nd at 11 a.m. If you're watching this before then. Then on February 25th, I'm gonna be teaching on the Ghana or the temperament. Again, that's this, um, uh, race here which says Rakshasha. It's actually this also could be the Ghana or the temperament. The race is also what it's called. These are these are different oh, words for it. But these temperaments, the demon, human, or angel temperament, it's called Ghana. And then there's also the nature, the fierce and severe, the light and swift. You can see this type here, sharp and dreadful, light, swift, soft, mixed, as you can see. And these this Courses being taught right from the right from the original source material. These are this is a picture of my books right here, Kala Prakashika, Mahorta Chintamani. So these are classical texts that I'm going to be using to teach this course. So again, this is also a great way for you to understand the difference between Vedic astrology and Western astrology. You know, Vedic astrology is based on the correct zodiac, and I say correct because the sky is the first zodiac. Um, if people want to calculate like they do in Western astrology based on the vernal equinox, okay, but then that's kind of conflating two things. It's joining the calendar with the, with the, with the zodiac and they're different things. But Vedic astrology is based on this zodiac that's in alignment with the sky. And so when we do that, then we're in alignment with like your astronomy app and all that stuff too. So this Full moon in Leo in Magha Nakshatra is a very transformative time as all the full moons are and we're entering and getting very close to this next cycle which is going to be the eclipse cycle. So by the time we come around to this next new moon, it's going to be a new moon in Pisces joined Rahu, right? Um, and then we're going to have the next full moon is going to be a lunar eclipse. Again, big things happening on that lunar eclipse that we already know about. And then the next, you know, like in a month and a half, we're going to have the solar eclipse in Pisces. So this is a big transformative window that's opening now. And it's also a time what these great big portals are about are doing things like, you know, taking a chance and studying this kind of information. These eclipses and this kind of this kind of energy is what really gets people going the next level. Um, like I say, I make these courses really affordable. This is going to wind up being 10 to 12 hours of regular course time, plus about three or four hours with these shock and awe classes that you can get these overall, um, you know, these, um, you know, I call them shock and awe classes because I just get in there and really teach very deep and probing 
um, overview of one of these principles at a time. So again, the inner animal, if someone wants to really learn about the yoni of the nakshatra, very important. If someone wants to really learn about the gana and how to analyze and assess the gana, these are things used in Vedic relationship astrology, but I'm going to be talking about them separately in this course, not just as something to use in relationship astrology, but as a, as a part of your nature. You, part of your nature is this sharp, dreadful, light, swift, soft, mixed energy, right? And each planet is in a nakshatra, right? And so, you know, like for me, I have my moon in, it's actually called a vishaka, which is tiger, right? So I have a tiger animal, and it's also soft and dreadful. It's a mixed nakshatra indicator. So that moon has that temperament, but then most of the other planets for me are in soft nakshatras. Can't you see how soft I am? No, I have Ascendant Mercury Venus in what's called Mrigashira, which is one of the softest ones. It's called Mridu, very soft. And then I also have Jupiter in a very soft nakshatra, which is called um, Revati. So there are different qualities, different temperaments. And so understanding each one of these things um, as it relates to each one of the nakshatras and the yoni animals and things like that are very important. So if, that's inter if that interests you, then that's also there. But... In particular, this full moon in Leo um, and this Magha Nakshatra is very much about stepping into that into that sort of duality between your collective identity and who you are with the you know with Sun Saturn Mercury in Aquarius. Now there's a lot of energy put on that, particularly because Saturn is also the ruler here. So Saturn is very dominant in this context. And Saturn is the ruler of Aquarius because Saturn is where we concentrate on something. We take something seriously and we make a commitment to it and we want to bring it about. So again, in this case, Saturn is an Aquarius where we're making a commitment to the world we want to create. The next world, the new world. What are we going to leave our progeny? And we, this is why we see so, so much political division these days. So, so much of working through these political transitions right now. Some people think, okay, we've gotten too far away from the traditional values, so we got to come back to that. Others think, you know what, those old ways are over, and it's a new world, it's a new, you know, identity. So again, we're really wrangling over these things now with the with Saturn going through Aquarius for the next year. So that's a very prominent aspect of this transit. But then the moon goes through Leo. We have this full moon reflecting back. And particularly in Magha Nakshatra, again, it's a great time to connect with the Petris, with the divine ancestors, with these great teachings, these great wisdom traditions. These are, these are transcendent teachings that aren't just about, you know, right now and your life right now. These, you know, these um, teachings come from the mists of time. They come from, from, again, the ancient sources where people were in alignment with, you know, the higher, higher you know, mystical magic. That's why it's called nakshatra magic indicators. These are very magical. And anyone who has studied nakshatras knows this. So again, if that interests you, but it's very much a good time to be doing that with the moon going through Magha nakshatra, connected to the Petris, the divine ancestors, to really align with these higher teachings. And again, make a commitment to them, really learning it. Um, so I do my best to make that affordable. But aside from that part of it, um, I hope you, um, you know, calibrate and live in alignment with this upcoming full moon in Leo. And I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel.